Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 5, Earth's Processes. In this particular video, we're going to look at the plate tectonic supercycle. The outcome or the learning intention for this particular video is pretty straightforward. All we want you to be able to do is to model the plate tectonic supercycle. If we're going to model the plate tectonic supercycle, the first thing we need to know is what is the plate tectonic supercycle and how do we um, describe what's going on in that particular cycle. Then we want to see if there are ways that we can think about how we might model this process and perhaps what we might need to do is to understand it in a little bit more detail and one of the ways that we can explain the plate tectonic supercycle is using the Wilson cycle. So we'll have a look at those things, see how they fit together and then what we will get you to do is to um, put some models together during class time. What is the plate tectonic supercycle? Well, the plate tectonic supercycle is basically um, a concept that's based on the fact that the Earth goes through uh, periods of um, continents coming together as supercontinents and then drifting apart again. So we've seen a couple of times um, over the history of the Earth where we've got these cycles of supercontinents uh, one single continent, such as Pangaea, one of the ones that we've talked about previously, with this vast ocean, uh, Panthalassa, and, um, and then the separation of that huge continent into um, two smaller continents and then subsequently into smaller and smaller ones. Um, this kind of cycle of coming together and pulling, um, and pulling apart is what we refer to when we talk about the plate tectonic supercycle. One of the other things that you see that um, may accompany this super cycle is a shift from an ice house climate, a very cold climate, to a greenhouse climate. We use those two terms as opposites of one another um, in order to identify one kind of environment where we are having falling temperatures and one where we're having rising temperatures. And some of that, of course, is, has got to do with the way that the continents are distributed in the oceans around those different continents. So how do we explain this kind of idea of continents coming together and then splitting apart and then coming back together again? Well, one of the ways that this was first suggested was by Tuzo Wilson in 1968. There's a paper that you can have a look at um, that explains this in a really nice amount of detail. And we can see kind of six general stages. Sometimes these are kind of split into slightly um, uh, smaller um, steps. Uh, so sometimes you might see more than, than your basic six. So in the diagram here, I've included eight, um, but in the list I've kind of included six. And so hopefully when you look through the, the, the information and the diagram together, you'll put these together to understand exactly what's going on here. The first stage is kind of this, this area, I guess, and, and with any cycle, you can kind of start anywhere you like, really, because that's the whole point of a cycle is that it, it, moves, it moves around. But somewhere between the cratons, so the cratons are those uh, stable regions of continental crust, uh, which don't have the same tectonic activity um, that we see in other parts of the crust. So these are kind of stable parts of the Earth's crust, or, or at least the lithosphere, so the crust and the upper mantle, that have uh, existed for very, very long periods of time. And they can get a bit of a sag in them, so we kind of, so this is kind of the end of the process or the beginning of the process, depending on where you're looking at in the cycle. And so what we get then is we get this kind of embryonic stage, the very first part, where we get a little bit of uplift, and that uplift is coming through um, from the asthenosphere, from below the crust. Um, that's going to, I guess, parallel what we see happening in the East African Rift that we see nowadays. Just that start of that little separation uh, between those two parts of the continental crust. What this is going to do, of course, is you're going to start to um, create this rift, create this valley, and, um, and so ultimately this is where your uh, initial ocean, uh, your, your young ocean, is going to start to form. We get this uh, concept of seafloor spreading um, as the two continental um, masses are moving apart from one another and you start to create this young juvenile ocean. As this continues to happen, you can see that we, uh, we've, we've looked again at things like um, the Atlantic and how that huge mid-ocean ridge has formed through there, separating um, the continental crust on either side and creating this model of seafloor spreading 
uh, of mountain ranges underneath the oceans. And this is kind of our next stage is you get this um, stage where, you, where you're looking at, um, say, what we call a juvenile to mature stage where the two continents, the two blocks have started to move apart and you've got that new uh, crust being created um, as a re result of that divergent boundary. And again, there's a, there's a few different examples of these that we can um, have a look at uh, to see how this is happening. So the Red Sea is kind of an early example of that. Um, we can see a lot of this sort of activity that's happening um, in uh, Iceland and all of those, uh, those kinds of sort of examples of that. Uh, so, and that's kind of obviously a much more mature example. So we've got this uh, ocean building, we've got this ocean occurring in between these two um, continental plates as they sort of pulling apart from one another um, as new crust is being created. And then the next step that we have basically is this um, initiation of a subduction zone. So um, away from that area of uplift of um, thermal expansion, uh, that's creating that new crust. We then have a region where the crust is going to be um, destroyed. So we've got creation and destruction of the, the Earth's crust. Remember, one of our concepts that we're trying to, to hang on to is the fact that if we're creating new crust, we can't just keep creating new crust because we're going to end up with this um, massive, massive Earth. It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. So as the crust is being created in one place, it's being destroyed in another place in subduction zones. Uh, exactly the sort of place where some of that crust is being um, returned back into the mantle. And so that's our next one. We've got the, the ocean now starting to decline. We've got this subduction zone starting to form. And um, as we move through from this declining stage, so from our mature uh, mid-ocean ridge, our uh, creation of new ocean, creation of new crust that's sitting in the base of that ocean, now we've got um, a subduction zone, which is starting to remove some of that material. And as a result, we end up with a subsequent closure of the ocean basins um, through this subduction. So instead of it now moving further away, what's happening is we're kind of bringing it back together again as all of that um, crust starts to disappear um, down through the subduction zone back into the mantle. Ultimately, what might happen is that the two continents that originally moved apart from another, those sort of stable cratons where we, we weren't having all of that sort of um, tectonic activity, they've sort of moved apart from one another, and then the subduction zone is going to bring them back together again. And this cycling of moving apart and coming back together, um, the creation of new ocean, and then the um, uh, subsequent... Uh, removal, I guess, or closure of those ocean basins is the whole principle behind the um, plate tectonic supercycle. And that's what we want you to model. So what we're going to get you to do is to, um, and I've kind of skipped through this very quickly, I've mentioned one or two little examples along the way, but it'd be um, good to have a look at some specific examples of each of the stages. So we'll try and identify each of these stages for you. Perhaps use some uh, Play-Doh, modeling clay, those sorts of things can be nice, easy ways of demonstrating some of the key stages in the Wilson cycle and helping you to explain through the use of models the plate tectonic supercycle. Thanks for watching.